Hello everyone, I'm Mary Gorhanen. I'm the Senior Narrative Designer on Returnal, and I'm here today with Jane Perry, the voice of Celine. It's so nice to be here with you on Atropos. I'm thrilled to be here with you as well on Atropos. Yes. It's just so amazing and, and special. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. And we found this nice quiet corner, uh, mostly free of hostiles. <laughs> mostly. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Mm, you never Let's know. try to keep this short. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, we know you best as the voice of Celine, but can you talk us a little bit more about your previous work? Sure thing, yeah. I've done um, a number of voices in games, and um, I suppose the one that, uh, along with Celine, that I've worked on the most has been Diana Burnwood in the Hitman uh, franchise. So I've been working on that game for a number of, of years now. Over the years, I've, yeah, I've played uh, many characters, but the other one perhaps that I'm known for is Karen Bowman in Ghost Recon, mm -hmm. and then I was uh, in Alien Isolation, mm -hmm. and uh, and lots of, of lovely things. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we're here to talk about Celine today. Yeah, wonderful Celine. Yes. So I'm curious to hear. So, what interested you in taking this role? Well, it's really an interesting question, actually, because as um, a voice actor in computer games. Uh, essentially, we have an agent mm -hmm. and uh, the client, i.e. Housemark, will contact an agent and say, look, this is what we've, we've got, mm -hmm. we've got this, this character and um, let's see who we can get to audition for it. So as a, a voice actor, sometimes you're not really sure what it mm -hmm. is you're auditioning for, what the game is, the scope of the game. There's a lot that we don't know at the beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. So I suppose in answer to your question, initially, what interested me was uh, based on my uh, the material that I had for the audition mm -hmm. and, and j just what I was able to learn about the game from the audition process. Mm -hmm. And then as we worked on this extraordinary game, I, I mean, I didn't even know at the beginning that I was actually sort of the only person in it, apart from mm -hmm. the young man who plays my son. Mm -hmm. um, so that slowly became clear to me that, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I see, this is, this is Celine. She's mm -hmm. kind of the game, and um, and I got to know her as as I uh, recorded the the role, and I became really interested in her. The more I got to know her, working on her, mm -hmm. uh, I became inc incredibly fascinated by by who she is mm -hmm. and the journey that she finds herself mm -hmm. on. And I think we're both kind of uh, delighted to see someone being represented as the protagonist of a video game who doesn't, you know, she has a lot of traits that don't get highlighted a lot. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. It's so exciting for me. You know, I, I sort of imagine that Celine and I are maybe the same age. Mm -hmm. She's probably a lot fitter than I am, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's a middle-aged mom, essentially. Mm -hmm. And yet there she is out there in this extraordinary environment kicking butt, mm -hmm. making things happen, uh, kind of trying to figure things out, mm -hmm. saving herself, making sense of the world around her. She's mm -hmm. a real hero uh, I in this story. And, and you're right, we don't get to see that that often. Mm -hmm. And I think when you consider how many women play games these mm -hmm. days, it's really great to have these um, amazing female role models, mm -hmm. you know, for, for young women to look up to, but also for women like myself to go, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I see myself mm -hmm. represented in this world. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's interesting to mm -hmm. me. And, and hopefully the guys <laughs> like it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was drawn to the project for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. Like Celine was there pretty much from the beginning. So when I was interviewing for the project, we were already talking about uh, kind of like the, uh, the kind of like crash landing astronaut and she was gonna be uh, she. And I was already like really excited about that and that she was going to have this dark backstory and she was going to be by default of how the story was, she would have to be an older woman. Mm -hmm. And it was so exciting when we got the first models done and I was kind of like, I can see wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. In high definition. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I see them when I look in the mirror and it's just, I, I don't have the same joyous response that you do. But, <laughs> but no, actually mm -hmm. I do because you know, she's a real woman, mm -hmm. right? And um, and, and she, she's lived a life and mm -hmm. it, it shows 
on her face and and mm. and it shows in, in the way she is in the world mm. and and possibly also in the choices that she makes mm. um, and that's really interesting mm. you, you know to see a sort of person's biography in mm -hmm. some ways etched out in in the way they look and the way they are mm -hmm. uh, in in the world or in this world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of the world is mirroring Celine so yeah. um, so kind of like you've you've gone through the whole gamut of Celine's emotions mm -hmm. uh, but what does Celine's journey like from the crash landing to the end what does that journey signify to you what what did it mean for you well I I kept feeling when we were working on um, Celine and recording I felt like this is a woman who's she's on a kind of internal journey in some mm -hmm. ways Astra I have returned to the tower not the crash site not this time is there any way back Ugh. something's not right here looks like a hospital bed and it's I, I felt like she's really trying to come to terms with her own past mm -hmm. and and, and trying to make sense of some of the things that have happened in her past. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the idea of white shadow mm -hmm. sort of beckoning her. You know, the shadow immediately makes me think of Jung, Jungian analysis mm -hmm. of, of the shadow and this, this uh, sort of drive that, that she has to integrate perhaps some of the trauma of the past and the things that have happened mm -hmm. into who she is now. But of course, that process is difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that sort of hero's journey can be absolutely fraught. And, mm -hmm. and Celine's journey is fraught. Extremely fraught. Yes. yes. She has, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, almost every day in, in Celine's life is a tough day. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yet she perseveres. She perseveres, mm -hmm. yeah. I think she's really driven to meet the shadow mm -hmm. and to maybe have the opportunity to heal and to integrate mm -hmm. the darkness that she, she carries. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's what really struck me about it. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you know, and we all have this journey, I think, where we have to come to terms with our, our past, mm -hmm. make sense of our family, some of the things that have happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that, that that's, what, that's what's going on with her. Mm -hmm. She meets some incredible challenges whilst doing so mm -hmm. and, and comes across some extraordinary creatures. We alone must find meaning amidst the flow. Creating our own fate. <laughs> that, yes. you know, I think sometimes <laughs> when you're dealing with these internal things, mm -hmm. you can project, not that Celine's projecting, mm -hmm. but just in a in a sort of, once again, a sort of Jungian approach mm -hmm. to it. You can project these things onto the world around you mm -hmm. that you have to grapple with, mm -hmm. and it affects the way you see things. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's incredible depth and undertones mm -hmm. uh, psychologically. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to take it onto just a purely sort of like physical level, she's just out there kicking butt, mm -hmm. getting the job done, you know, <laughs> like, and just doing what she has to do mm -hmm. on Atropos. Mm. Yeah, design-wise, it was just fascinating to be literally able to project the character's past and her fears and her thoughts into the world. Uh, because I think a lot of the times we struggle with the storytelling of like, how do we avoid the boring talky sections and kind of like having to, like, how do we show and not tell? And we could just basically use the whole planet as our canvas. Yes. Yeah. And even drop a house or two there. And yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I think what's so in interesting about the way you design this character is that, mm -hmm. you know, she's also got a job to do, like she's mm -hmm. a scientist. so. Mm -hmm. She's got this incredible facility physically, um, you know, to, to shoot and to run and, and, and mm -hmm. to, to do whatever she needs to do to survive physically. But she's mm -hmm. also um, analyzing, you know, mm -hmm. everything on this planet and using her scientific mind to make sense of things in order to survive. But also, you know, as a, as a scientist, you know, logging the things that she finds 
to mm -hmm. just try to understand what, what the world that she's in. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love that side of her. She's got, mm -hmm. you know, she's firing on all engines, really, mentally mm -hmm. and physically and, and, and I suppose spiritually as well. Exactly. That was, to me, very important that we didn't create this character who seemed like a space marine, mm -hmm. that they actually had a different job and they just kind of like, rolled with the punches like okay today i'm just gonna have to shoot a whole bunch of bunch of aliens yeah. to get through the day yeah uh, but that to me was very important and when we were developing the game i pushed really hard that we would have other verbs for the player uh, besides shoot and jump right and the scanning came through that and to me that would be that would be what we would as humans do if we landed on alien planet we'd just start cataloging everything figure out what is it what does it do can we monetize it somehow that's right how can we use <laughs> or it? weaponize it yeah. maybe yeah absolutely yeah so that that to me was very important that we can like utilize and showcase the scientist in her mm. even though most of the game is very uh, explosiony and actiony yeah. but in the quieter moments uh, especially when she kind of like reflects on things it's more like a scientist trying to make sense of yeah. the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I like that a lot about mm -hmm. her. And I, I think it's a great mm -hmm. mechanism to, to tell her story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did playing Celine pose any new challenges for you as an actress? Um, I think because she's so active, um, mm -hmm. I, you know, you, ha you obviously have the text, which you have to deliver, mm -hmm. but also the, the pre-life to the text. In other words, if, you know, if she's running, then you have to provide mm -hmm. the breath for that. And Celine <laughs> runs a lot. Yes. And, and so there were times <laughs> in the sessions where I'd, I'd sort of be crouched on the floor because I literally felt like I was going to faint from hyperventilating, just breathing uh, so much. And I found, I think because she goes to these you know, quite dark places mm -hmm. in her own mind. Um, I would feel quite exhausted at the end of it. Astra received my signal. Then, that's it. Like I, you know, we would maybe have a four hour recording session and I would just kind of go home and, you know, crawl through the front door and <laughs> sort of rest and recover mm -hmm. um, because it, you know, you sort of have to go there yourself mm -hmm. in, in some ways. So that was, um, that was challenging. And of course it is, it is just Celine and, and mm -hmm. in other projects it's, you know, you, you will be working with um, other actors or at least there's other lines that the mm -hmm. director will be reading for you. So you're reacting to, you mm -hmm. know, various things. Whereas I think with Celine, really, she is reacting to what she's seeing around her. So my, the engagement of my own imagination mm -hmm. in those recording sessions was, um, was quite full on. Mm -hmm. So I wish we had this for you. Oh, me too. Room. That would be great. <laughs> Half the work's done just, you know, seeing this amazing environment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can imagine it was a little bit different, kind of like most of the dialogue is actually monologue. Exactly. Um, yeah, uh, we were kind of like considering early on in the development, like should there be other characters for her mm -hmm. to talk with? Mm. And kind of like we, we went through the pros and cons and especially kind of like, you know, is it is it something that we have time to do? Yeah. Because we really wanted to focus on kind of like Celine. She was still the star and in the end, it kind of like felt actually the right decision to cut everyone else away because it increased that sense of isolation. Mm -hmm. Like there is there is no respite. There is no one else you can talk to except you can hear the crazed voices of other Celines. Yeah. And I think that kind of like helps heighten that particular challenge and well, her hell almost that she is. This was taken after I left. Why? Hello? Who is up there? So, did you do anything special to get into her mindset? That's an interesting question because, um, uh, for your viewers who, who might not know, mm -hmm. when you uh, voice a character in a computer game, 
you are never given a script in advance. So in other words, you, you never have the opportunity to read uh, the story from beginning, middle and end. Therefore, you have no opportunity to sort of prepare or make choices or even learn about your character. So getting into the mindset requires assistance. And that assistance comes from, uh, from your director, basically. So um, on Returnal, I had a voice director whose name is Damien Goodwin. And then Damien would work really closely with Greg uh, Loudon and Toivo Kahlo. Uh, so they were all in the session with me, uh, explaining to me exactly what's going on in any given moment that I had to perform. Um, and uh, I feel like in some ways, you know, my performance is um, really a group effort between myself, Damien, Greg and Toivo uh, because of their, their input. And, and Damien is so eloquent. He has uh, such a, a beautiful way of explaining things and, and really uh, would encourage me to uh, explore the nuances of Celine and what she's going through. So that's how I, I got into the mindset, really was uh, with the assistance uh, from the people who are also in the session with me. Mm. And that's a really, really important relationship between a voice actor and their director. It's, it's, um, it's crucial in a way. Mm. So I owe a lot to Damien. <laughs> that's... That can't be here. I think I am reliving my memories in that house, but not fully. They're corroded. Some parts are missing, others seem manufactured. But I can remember the torment, feeling like I was losing my mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm just fascinated to hear that because kind of like on the story side, we worked quite hard to make it ambiguous and kind of like make sure that there were those different interpretations available to the players. Is this real? Is this actually happening? Uh, like, what, what is she going through in those house sequences? Is this a memory? Is this something that is a twisted memory? Is this something that she wanted to happen? Is the planet just kind of like tormenting her in a way? And so it was kind of like very important that everything that we put into the world and everything we put into her lines what would have these kind of like very, kind of like very heavy nuances, kind of like a very layered uh, meanings and would reference things things here and there and you would find the same phrases in multiple places yeah so yeah i sometimes wonder like oh how is she gonna do this like how is she gonna deliver all of this meaning that we tried to pack into this single single piece here yeah i think you just take it moment by moment mm -hmm. and you you uh try to bring as much i suppose truth and uh your own personal meaning to it mm -hmm. uh with, with every line that, that you deliver. Mm. And maybe that is the gift in some ways of not having access to the whole script. Mm. You, you can't, you, you just have to play what's right in front of you in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I think for, you know, games in general, it's, I mean, maybe this game is an exception in the sense that there's not a lot of subtext going on, uh, usually in games. <laughs> so the players are just playing what's happening mm. in the moment. You know, here's a, a problem, I'm gonna, fix it mm -hmm. by shooting this guy or telling this person to do that or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and as I say, that there is a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of psychology as we touched on before mm -hmm. in this game. Subtext, maybe not. So just being in the moment is, um, is all you can do. Mm -hmm. And then you let the player decide mm -hmm. what's going on in this moment. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's also, you know, how they receive it. It's open to their interpretation. Mm -hmm. yes. That's my favorite part, at least. Um, kind of like that we left it open and we refused to say which is the yeah. like real version of events. Mm. I actually enjoy so much reading what the players theorize. And I kind of feel like even if we went out and said like, this is the canonical event, I think that would that would just rob it of this kind of like magic. Yes. And, and it would rob players the opportunity to come up with their own theories because I think some of them are way better than anything I could have <laughs> even thought up. Yeah. Uh, so. And I think it says something about what they what they pick out from yeah. that story, what they kind of like focus on. So it's it's a really fascinating thing. Like if if I come across Returnal fans, I would love to kind of like always love to hear their theory. Like was it real? Okay. Was it not? 
it seems to be like a very heavy division in the internet, like the team real and team <laughs> fake. Yes, yeah, I know. That must be so fascinating for you, having created all of this, to mm -hmm. see how it's received and to see how people interpret mm -hmm. it. And um, yeah, that's hugely enjoyable to, mm -hmm. to, to see the responses to it. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder sometimes from your perspective mm -hmm. and, and Housemark's perspective, if, if, if you even know what you've created in some ways. <laughs> a monster. <laughs> a monster. Because it does, you know, it does go into such deep territory mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it will affect people in different ways. So that mm -hmm. must be so fascinating just mm -hmm. to see the feedback and the interpretations of it. And, mm -hmm. and it is shrouded in this mystery. And, and, and I think that's so clever too, because it keeps people guessing mm -hmm. and engaged and, you know, in, in the story and wanting to, mm -hmm. wanting to figure it out as much as Celine wants mm -hmm. to figure it out. And I think because games are an interactive medium, uh, you can only create like half the story because the players by playing it, by interacting with it and making the choices and interpreting those choices that they do, they create the other half of the story. Mm. So I don't think I can even say that, you know, I have the one true version of the story because, um, you know, I didn't play it for you. I didn't play it for anyone else. Right. So um, it's it's really created together with the players. Yes, yeah, that's true. It's a sort of co-creation, mm. which is, is wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to touch on your most enjoyable part of this process. Like what has to you been the best part about this all? Oh, gosh, that's such a good question. I have so enjoyed um, seeing, you know, the, the end result. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in the recording studio, um, you really are just working with the lines. And then every now and then there would be a, a, a small video graphic um, that, that would be shown to me just so I could get sort of context as to where I am. Or maybe it's a question of timing. I reach out for this thing and I have to react mm -hmm. to it at a certain point. Such strange markings. Where did this Um, so, but you don't really get a sense of the game until you start to, to see, you know, the trailer and the images on YouTube and, and, you, you know, and I found that like, I was blown away mm -hmm. by how great this game looks. It, it's such a, a, just an amazing universe world that, that you've created. Mm -hmm. And I found that really thrilling mm -hmm. and I felt quite chuffed. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in that. <laughs> yes, um, uh, but I think I'm seeing the astronaut over there. So I think it's it's time that we uh, start packing up and try to get off this planet. Yeah. Okay, that <laughs> so, sounds good. Yes, this was wonderful. Thank you, Jane. And you know, hope to see more Returnal and more Outrepos in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.